Hey everybody, Mrs. KJ here, and apparently my cat Spot decided that this would be the most interesting <laughs> recording to come to. So um, I have to use the webcam a few times during, so I figured I'd just put it on. So this one's Significant Figures, and this lesson is all about measuring and recording data. So go ahead and add the title to your notes, and I will tell you along the way what is important for you to write down. So this is talking about measurements. The first thing is you need to have an idea of how big these units are. So an inch. About how big is an inch? Well, for most people, it's from your thumb knuckle to the edge of your thumb, not including your fingernail, especially if you have long fingernails. It's about that long. What about a foot? How big is a foot? Well, hopefully you know a foot is 12 inches. And depending on the size of your shoe, right? <laughs> depending on the size of your shoe, um, your foot might actually be a foot long. Um, for ladies, you would have to have at least a size 10 or larger shoe for that to be true. Gentlemen, you probably have a more likely chance of this happening. Your shoe size would be a size 9 or higher. So if it is, measure. See how long your foot is. Okay. What about a yard? Well, a yard is about three feet, which is about this much. So don't put your arms straight out shoulder width, but just kind of, you know, gently, just kind of, yep, that's about a yard. And you can measure and figure out exactly how big it is, but that's a good estimate to have. What about a mile? A mile is 5,280 feet, which is how far from your house? Do you know what is a mile from your house? If not, the next time you go in the car, ask, the driver, if it's not you, to set the odometer and measure how far away is an actual mile. What about a cup? Is a cup more or less than a standard can of soda? Well, it's eight fluid ounces and a can of soda is 12, so a cup is less. And I actually don't have a can of pop because I decided today to stop drinking Mountain Dew for a while. <laughs> Go figure, right? And I need it. So a can of Mountain Dew would about fill up this glass. So about this much, or if you've ever seen those little cans of pop, now they're starting to sell them in one cup cans. A gallon, think of a gallon of milk, and a pound, oops, sorry, that one snuck in there. A pound is about a box of spaghetti noodles. So that's another good thing. You know, go in your kitchen, find something that's a pound so you have an idea for how big a pound actually is. All right, so that's all fine. And now we have to add in metrics because it's a science class, so we need to know metrics. So if you have a millimeter, how big is a millimeter? It's about the width of a hair. A centimeter is across your fingernail, usually on your little finger. So if you measure from here to here, that's about a centimeter. And what about a meter? A meter is a little bit longer than a yard. So we said a yard is about like this. So it's just a couple inches longer. So they're about the same. Okay, especially if you're estimating. Yes, can you tell my cat Spot thinks this is so exciting? She's like, oh, that's how big a meter is compared to a yard. A kilometer is two-thirds of a mile, so a little more than half a mile. A milliliter is one cubic centimeter. So a centimeter, we said, was the width of your little fingernail. So if you kind of go like this, that's about a centimeter cubed. And then if you think, okay, so it's like about that big and up to here, so that little bit would be about a milliliter. Um, a liter, obviously you've seen two liter bottles of pop and they also sell one liter bottles of pop now. A gram is about as much as a paper clip and a kilogram would be twice as much as a pound, technically 2.2 pounds, but about twice as much. And that would be two boxes of spaghetti. All right, now as far as what you need to write down on the screen, you should have an idea of how big all of these are for the metric. So I would like you to at least write down the metrics. And if you felt like, oh, yeah, that's actually pretty good, um, go ahead and write down for the English units, too. And I skipped the thing about speaking of how long is your hand, which I actually do want to pause for. And so what I mean is if you measure from here to here, and for me, it's exactly seven inches. And it seems kind of silly, but especially as you move into your own place, there's something handy about having a unit of measurement that you can count on. For example, if you're moving into a new place and you know that your doors are 34 inches across and you want to buy a new recliner or you found a free one on the side of the road and you want to be the first one to pick it up, <laughs> it's an easy way to just kind of put your hands next to each other and estimate if it will fit through the door. 
So it sounds kind of silly, but it actually, excuse the pun, comes in handy. So I would like you to hit pause and find a ruler and measure how long your hand is. Now I know, I will not know if you do this, but it's just something that comes in handy in life. So I would really hope that you hit pause and do that right now. Okay, so now that you've measured how many inches long your hand is and you wrote down the measurements from the previous slide, this slide you do need to copy down all of it. What's the difference? So we have two vocab words. The first one is accurate. Accurate is how close to the correct answer you are. The other word is precise. Many measurements are close to each other and may or may not be close to the correct answer. So if you're shooting darts or shooting arrows, where do you want to hit? The center, the bullseye, in this case the yellow. This one we would say is fairly accurate. They did okay, not too bad. This one is obviously awesome, right? This one is completely accurate and it's precise. So let's jump over here and look what precise is. Precise means, well, they didn't all get in the bullseye and they were, you know, but they were close together. So here, all my arrows or my darts were close together, which tells me I probably need to adjust my scope up and to the right a little bit, right? In this case, it's both. They're precise, they're in a close group together, and they're accurate, they're right on the money. Okay, so again, this one is pretty accurate. They're all pretty close to the center, but not real precise because they're kind of spread out. Precise is how packed in they are, how close they are together. So again, this one is accurate, but not precise. This one is accurate and precise, and this one is precise, but not really accurate. So what would it look like if it is not precise and it is not accurate? Well, they'd be all over the place, right? Neither one. It's a big mess. They are not accurate because they're not towards the yellow and they're not precise. They're all over the place. Okay, so now let's do this numerically because, you know, in the lab, some of them we will be able to observe, but some of them are just numbers. So match them for a five pound bag of sugar. Which of these measurements would be accurate, but not precise, accurate and precise? So accurate, meaning it's close to the correct answer, but all your choices aren't exactly the same. They're accurate and precise, so it's right on that bullseye. Every single one is close together and it's correct. Precise, but not accurate. So they're in a group, but they're over here instead of over here where they should be. Or neither. So hit pause, match them up. And accurate but not precise, four, five, six, that's pretty close to five. Accurate and precise, five, four and a half, four point eight, real close. Precise but not accurate. They're in a group, they're 10, 10.1, 9.9, but they're not accurate. And neither, five, ten, two, they're all over the place. This would be a good example to write down as well. Um, or I guess and the bullseye, because I like the bullseye because it's a great way to look real quick and be like, oh yeah, yeah, I got it, yep, in a group, not on the bullseye. But it's nice to have a numerical answer so that when you do get some of those, you're like, oh yeah, but my numbers, where do they go on the bullseye? Or if it helps, draw a number line, like you do in math class sometimes, like zero, one, two, three, four, five, put them on the number line and see if they're accurate and precise. Accurate, but not precise, precise, but not accurate or all over the place in either one. This is one reason why we do at least three trials in lab because we wanna see are our answers precise? Are they accurate? And having at least three is a good comparison so you can get a good average or have one that's over here and one that's over there and you're like, okay, which one was right? Oh, my second one was over there. Okay, did I make a mistake on this one? Let's check it out. So if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And I was looking just for a graphic on Google and I didn't want to pick that one because I'm like, oh, it's like a little kid. But then I thought, wait, that is a good one because chemistry can be really tough. Well, you know what? When you were a little kid, tying your shoe was really tough, right? I mean, some people might have even cried over it or you get that great big knot and you just give up and you walk around with your shoes in big knots for a few days. How many of you have done that? Oh yeah, totally have. <laughs> so. But now tying your shoe is nothing, right? It's no big deal. Chemistry might not ever get to the point where it's nothing, but a lot of it does get to the point where when you practice enough, it's not such a big deal, all right? So don't give up. Always 
measure to the nearest line and estimate one place value beyond. Okay, so write this down. This is where it's getting into our lab data. We want to talk about, write what we know for sure, how accurate it is, and estimate to the next place value to help see if we're really being precise. So in chemistry, always measure to the nearest line on your tool and estimate one place value beyond. So let's do an example. What's the difference between these two rulers? They both measure centimeters, but this one technically me measures to what? To tenths of a centimeter, which is a millimeter. So this one technically measures to millimeters. So, okay, how long would you say this steel pipe is? Or the gray line, whatever. Let's say it's a steel pipe. How long would you say this steel pipe is? And then how long would you say the steel pipe is down here? So if you're saying, well, they're exactly the same, yes, but your answer is going to be different. Do you know the difference? So the top one can measure to centimeters. So I have a little line here because I would say, all right, let's estimate. So about right in the middle between two and three is two and a half. So I know for sure that this one is more than two because that's my line. I can accurately say it's at least two centimeters, but you need to estimate to one more place value. So I'd say, well, it's not all the way up to 2.5. So I would say, eh, maybe about 2.2, 2.3. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, why doesn't she just say 2.25? No, I cannot do that because that's two place values beyond the known, beyond the accurate one. So I know for accuracy that it's over two. So that's my one's place value. I can only add another place value, just one more, not two more. So I can't do this. You have to pick 2.2 or 2.3. Okay, what about when we go down here? Well, now I can move my line to right up close to it. And what would you say? Well, we know for sure now that it goes up to the two again. So we're good for that. And we can see that it goes past the second line. So we know it's 2.2 for sure. So now we say, well, is it 2.25? Is it halfway between those lines? Closer to the two, closer to the three. Well, it's closer to the two. So, and it's not quite in the middle, so maybe it's 2.22 or 2.23. So as a scientist, there's a big difference. As a scientist, I look at this and I say, oh, okay, we only know it was two centimeters and we're estimating. Here I'm saying we know it was 2.2 centimeters and we're estimating that little bit more. So that's the big difference between those. And it is really important for lab, which, I mean, honestly, with the labs we're doing, you know, okay, we're off by a little bit. But when you get into more detailed science labs, especially if you take any in college, it can make a big difference. And when you're talking about medicine, it makes a big difference. So I'm going to show you some examples in real life where it might matter a little bit more to you. So the fact that we have to be accurate when we measure, the fact that we can accurately measure to centimeters versus millimeters and we estimate to one more place value. That of course has a vocabulary word and that's significant figures. Significant figures is the fact that we write a measurement with only one estimated value beyond what we know. So go ahead and write down what significant figures is. And there are three rules on determining how many significant figures are in a number. Number one, non-zero digits are always significant. So if you see a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it counts. If you see a 0, eh, it might count, it might not. Any zeros between two numbers. So if I have the number 101, 101, the 0 in the middle counts. If a final 0 or trailing zeros in the decimal portion only are significant, so only if they matter for accuracy versus the fact that you're holding the decimal. That last one, i got to show you an example of. As far as these rules, I'm not going to go that into significant figures. For our chemistry class, we're just going to round everything to hundredths because it's going to make it easier in the long run. But it is a state standard that we talk about significant figures, and it matters with measuring in lab. So that's a big reason why I wanted to talk about it here. So um, let's talk about money. Oh my gosh. When you talk about decimal numbers, if you're having a hard time understanding them, think of money because everyone understands money. Um, and so I'm going to pick up this slide in the next recording because I'm about to run out of time. Speaking of money, because I'm not going to pay for the extended program.
All right. <laughs> See you in the next video.